Hi there. Post-processing is a very powerful tool which can make your games appear more professional with very little effort. Today, I'm going to show you how to put it into your next Unity project. Enjoy. I'm here in the project we made last video where we learned about the new input system. I'm gonna use this as a template to add some post-processing effects. First things first, we need to go to the package manager. You can reach the package manager by going to windows and then package manager and go and install the universal render pipeline. Okay, the universal render pipeline has been installed. So now we can just close the window. Okay, so now we want to, in our hierarchy, create a new object. It's gonna be a volume. And here you can choose between different types of volumes. A global volume will affect the entire scene, no matter where the camera is. But if you choose one of these others, as long as the camera is within the collider, the effect will apply. This is useful for certain situations, like for example, when you're underwater or you're in a cave or something like that. Let's create a global volume. Anytime you can also change the mode from global to local and then pick one of the collider types. But let's just get some test effects running for now. For the profile, you're gonna go, to go here and click the new button. This will create a new profile. And now you can click add override. These will be the effects that you can actually do. And here you can see our bunch of effects. Let's start out simple with a vignette. Each of these options here is something that can be changed, but you need to be sure that the checkbox is actually ticked. You can also go up here and press the none or all buttons respectively. Okay, before that works, we'll first need to create the rendering pipeline asset. So if you go right click create rendering universal render pipeline pipeline asset, uh, call it whatever you want. Uh, the default settings will also be fine. You just go to the project settings and if you go to graphics, you can select your scriptable render pipeline object. And as you can see now in the scene, uh, there's a vignette, but there's not in the game view. If we go to the main camera, you can see there's a post processing checkbox. You just need to check that and now it works. And you can see also if we change the settings on the global volume, it'll change in real time. Okay, let's add some other effects. If we just add another override, uh, let's start with the tone mapping. This is, we should have started with this first, uh, but I can anyway move it up. And if we check the check mark, you can see that we can pick between one of these two settings. Uh, this will give your scene a look that you can go for, and it's a nice place to start with. The neutral you can use in many cases, I think ACES is what they use for some film scenarios. You can use whichever one you want. By the way, I recommend playing around with all these things. It's a lot easier to understand what each of these settings do and, you know, play around with them if you just try it yourself. Okay, let's add some chromatic aberration. This is another one of my favorite effects that I use. It's just a simple slider, but what it'll do is if I enter in the game view here, you can see that objects near the edges are going to look sort of different. They'll have the colors split up into different channels. This is a really fun effect. You can see there the blue, red, and green channels split up, uh, but only when it's near the edge. And of course, this changes when you move the slider. Another one of my favorite effects is lens distortion. Uh, if we select this, you can see if we just change the intensity knob here, what'll happen is the field of view changes. So uh, the lens gets kind of distorted. Hold on, I'll add some objects in the scene so that way you can make more sense of this. Okay, I've added some simple squares. Now you can see if we turn on the lens distortion and change the value here a bit, you'll see that it appears as if the screen is sort of getting circular. This is a very fun effect to play with in 2D games. You can also, of course, do it in the other direction if you want. And of course, scale it if, if you only want it on the X direction or only on the Y, you can do that. You can also, of course, change the center and a bunch of other options. Again, I recommend playing with it because it's a lot easier to understand when you do it yourself. A fun one that you might want to play around with is the color curves. You have to click override and you can see, you can 
move this red around and make it more or less intensive. Basically what the render pipeline is looking at is how much red is there in, for example, the pixel above the player or the player, or I mean, actually it's all pixels. And then it'll look at this graph and it'll go up there and then use the other value. So now red is, for example, stronger. You could move it down here and red is weaker. You can play around with that. Also ch change the tangents if you wanna do something weird, like if you wanna make the what would have normally been uh, weaker red stronger, but the stronger red weaker, you can do something like this. You can just play around with it. I'm gonna remove this. Another very powerful one is bloom, especially if you have some lighting. Feel free to check out my other video on shadows. But basically bloom takes the intensity of a certain pixel and if it's above this threshold here, it'll let some of the pixels from the light or I guess just the, the object bleed over into the neighboring pixels. The last effect I'm gonna showcase is the film grain. Basically what this will do is it'll add a little bit of noise into your image. You can see here if we bump up the intensity, there's a bunch of noise. You can also change the, the size of it uh, if you want to make it smaller or, or larger. This is uh, especially nice for horror games if you want to have a go at that. But yeah, that was today's video. If you guys liked the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you really liked it, hit subscribe and hit that bell. It means a lot and it's free.